Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to our language sensitivity series as part of the Educate to Eliminate initiative. Many Muslim women suffer from abusive marital relationships. They tend to avoid seeking help due to the fear of how they will be perceived by the community. It's our responsibility as one ummah to support Muslim women going through such difficult time. We also need to recognize that abuse takes many shapes and forms, and it's our collective responsibility to support the victim and help her move out of the abusive situation. We will list the types of abuse, but it's also very important to recognize that all forms of abuse are equally damaging and hurtful. So the type of abuse are psychological, emotional abuse, physical abuse, verbal abuse, sexual abuse, spiritual abuse, financial abuse, intellectual abuse. We want to highlight that making comments like, at least he doesn't beat you, to a woman suffering from a mental abuse is not helpful at all and can have actually very damaging effects. It's also very important to be informed of all these forms of abuse and acknowledge the equal harm they cause. Lacking this awareness might lead to further oppression of an abused woman. Also, many women experience spiritual abuse, and it's our duty to validate their experience to avoid greater injustices. Ibn al-Qayyim, a prominent scholar, stated, Islam in its entirety is justice, compassion, prosperity, and wisdom, and therefore anything which contradicts this and results in injustice, cruelty, harm, or nonsense can never be claimed to be part of the religion, no matter what interpretation attempt to do so. Now, this quote sort of reminds us of the importance of standing against injustices and our obligation as Muslim to those who are being oppressed. We will share common things people might say to women experiencing abuse, and we will compare alternative statements that would be more appropriate and more mindful. Keep in mind that to practice a pause and reflect before responding with any of these commonly used statements. If you know your intention is to help your Muslim sister, then consider the power of your words and the difference they make. These statements, although common, they dismiss the victim's experience and they blame and guilt and shame the victim. These commonly used statements also justify and normalize the abuser's behavior, and they also free the abuser from any accountability. Now, the first example of a commonly used phrase is saying something along the line of, well, what did you do to or say to make him angry? Or you must have done or said something that provoked him. Now, let's pause for a second. Can you recognize how this would make the victim feel? It would probably make her feel very guilty and ashamed. So instead of saying that, let's try saying something along the line of, I'm sorry you're going through this. No one has the right to mistreat you. I want to help you. And I wonder how I can support you. I hope you recognize the difference here and how the alternative response is very non-judgmental. Another common negative response is saying, a good wife must be very patient and knows how to handle conflict. Hmm, let's pause. So most people say statements with good intentions, but unfortunately they lead to very harmful outcome. So it's very important to be mindful of how to translate your good intentions to mindful and non-judgmental language. So instead, you can say something along the line of, you're very powerful and courageous for opening up and sharing your experience. I'm so sorry you're going through this. How can I help you? Now, saying this will help the woman feel safe and hurt. Now, let's look at another negative and common response. Well, it can't be that bad. I've seen how kind he is with everyone in the community. Hmm, let's pause again. This is especially painful because it is gaslighting the experience of the abused woman and further enabling the abuser. So the abuser could be wonderful with the community, but still abusing his wife. So be mindful of what you're saying. And instead, try saying something along the line of, you know what, I believe you. I'm here to listen and support you. You notice the difference? This statement is very comforting, very empowering because it's also validating the victim's experience. Another harmful statement to avoid is saying something along the line of, it's your qadr, it's your fate. Be patient and make dua that he will change. 
Let's pause for a second here. So dua is very powerful, but Islam does not approve staying in an abusive relationship because Islam prohibits all forms of oppressions and injustices. So again, be very mindful of what you say and maybe try say something along the line of, this is not okay and you have every right to feel the way you're feeling now. Please know there's support. If you'd like, let's both look into what resources and services are available for you. So you see the difference? Okay, let's move to another harmful statement that's also commonly used. It could be saying something along the line of, you're very needy. Maybe try to be more humble and less needy. Hmm, let's pause again. Now, this is a very problematic thing to say because it directly blames the victim and free the abuser from any responsibility or accountability. So again, we're being mindful and trying to say the right things. So try to say something along the line of, I can only imagine how hard it has been for you. Thank you for trusting me and sharing your concerns and needs with me. Is there anything I can support you with? See the difference? And finally, the last statement we will share is saying something along the line with, you nag too much. Hmm. Let's pause. This is unfortunately a very common label that women hear. You can see how this statement minimizes her concern. So that's why we want to avoid it. And instead, try to say something along the line of, it sounds like you're going through a lot. I'm here if you want to share what happened. We're going to pause here. And there's a lot more to say on this topic, especially around the do's and don'ts of what to say to a Muslim woman who's transitioning out of or have left the abusive situation. For a more detailed explanation on how to effectively support women in this situation, check out the Language Sensitivity Toolkit at nisahelpline.com. Thank you for watching. Inshallah, in our next video, we will touch more upon how to create a safe space for communication. Assalamu alaikum.